Ever wonder why the phrase save the bees has become so common? In this special episode of Science Snacks, produced by Jack, a University of Arizona ecology student and member of the Insect Discovery Program, we can get a sneak peek into the world of bees. Bumblebees are social insects, meaning they live together in nests, and like humans, they divide their labor. All worker bees are female. Some of them spend more time foraging for nectar and pollen, while others spend more time caring for young or protecting the nest. Here you can see the bees building their nest. They use the structures they make to store honey and to raise their young. True social behavior like you're seeing here is actually really rare in insects, but insects that do show this behavior tend to exist in extremely high numbers. One way to tell bumblebees apart from honeybees is the colony size. Bumblebees usually have colonies of between 50 to 250 individuals, while honeybees can have colonies of up to 60,000 individuals. Another way that you can tell them apart is just by looking at them. What differences do you see between these two bees? I notice that the bumblebee on the left is much rounder and fuzzier than the honeybee on the right. And also the three segments of the honeybee's body are much easier to tell apart than those of the bumblebee. So what is the role that bumblebees play in their environment? And why as humans should we be interested in their well-being? Well, bumblebees are pollinators, meaning they visit many flowers feeding on nectar and pollen. And in doing so, they transport pollen from one flower to another. Plants need pollen to be moved from flower to flower in order to make fruit which carries their seeds. So because of this relationship, plants are able to reproduce and pollinators use their nectar and some of the pollen as food. Cool! So what makes bumblebees special in their role as pollinators? Well, bumblebees use a strategy called buzz pollination to get pollen from some flowers. As you can see, the bumblebee latches onto a flower and vibrates its flying muscles. Amazingly, by doing this, the bumblebee shakes free pollen that other pollinators are unable to access. There are some types of plants that are pollinated much more efficiently through buzz pollination, and many of these plants are important to us as agricultural crops. Some of these plants include tomatoes, potatoes, blueberries, cranberries, and peppers. So here's some footage from a project I helped work on in the lab. We want to know if bumblebees are able to learn to forage better from flowers they have not seen before in a simple environment like this, or in a complex environment like this. What do you think? Do you think bees in the simple environment would be able to learn better? or bees in the complex environment would be able to learn better. Well, generally what we found is that in a task like this one, where a bee has to move a cap off of a tube in order to feed, the bees in the simple environment are able to solve the problem more quickly and more often than bees in the complex environment. This information could be applied to agriculture and could maybe help farmers set up their fields or greenhouses in a way that makes it easiest for bees to find and pollinate their flowers. So how can you and your families help to encourage pollinators and help us keep growing food? Well, keeping native bee-friendly plants around you and your house can help support their population. It can also be really fun when you start to notice the types of bees that live all around you. Before you go, I wanted to ask a couple of questions. What's something new you learned today about bumblebees that you didn't know before? And can you name a food that we rely on bumblebee buzz pollination to produce? We hope you have learned something new about bees in this episode of Bug Bites. Don't forget to tag us on Instagram or Twitter with your answers using the hashtag ScienceSnacks. Tune in next time for a new snack. Until then, stay hungry!